A Power Query custom function is simply a query that is run by other queries. We're going to create a custom function using the advanced editor. Let me show you how. Here we have the sales data for the month of January 2022, with the sales rep name and the amount of sales they generated for that month. Our end query needs to look like this, showing the month, sales rep name, that rep's percentage of sales they contributed to the total monthly sales, where the rep ranked for the month, and if they ranked in the top two, they were eligible to receive a bonus. The first step in creating a custom function is to create your main query. Let's use the source data here to create our main query. I've converted the data to a table and named the table January underscore 22. Let's send this to Power Query. Here in the query editor, Power Query applied the source and change type step. We first need to calculate the percentage of total monthly sales. Let's select the amount column and here in the transform tab, click on statistics and click on sum and the calculation resulted in the output being a single value, which is the total sales for the month of January. Let's rename this step to total. We still need to perform more transformations, so we need to get back our table. To do this, let's go to the view tab and select the advanced editor. If you would like to learn more on how to use the advanced editor, please check out this video here, Power Query Advanced Editor. The link is in the description also. Remember that the user interface will always generate code where each variable or step builds on the value returned by the previous variable or step. But when we're writing our own code in the advanced editor, we can move our variables around in the order that suits us. So let's select the entire line of code for the change type step and cut this. Insert a comma after the last bracket here in the total step. Then paste our code after the total step. And remove the comma after the last bracket here as there are no commas before the end statement. Let's move the total step to the top here. So every line of code has a comma after it except the last line, which is correct. The value returned by the in statement shows total, but we want to return our table and the last step to return the table was the change type step. So let's copy and paste that step in the in statement. No syntax errors have been detected. Let's click on done and we have our table back. Over here on our applied steps, we have our source, total and change type steps. Next, let's click on the Add Column tab and click on Custom Column. Let's rename this new column to Percentage of Total Monthly Sales. To calculate this, let's click on Amount to select it, then Divided by and type in Total. That's the step that we created when we summed up our amounts for the month and click on OK and we have our percentage of total monthly sales column. Now let's select month, hold down the control key and select sales rep and percentage of total monthly sales. Right click and select remove other columns as we don't need the amount column anymore. Next click on the drop down next to percentage of total monthly sales and click on sort descending and our rows are sorted from highest to lowest. Next, we want to rank the reps. We're going to use two functions to get us our ranking result, index and group by. In add column, click on the drop down next to index column and select from one. Now, notice that Ross and Jennifer have the same percentage totals, so they should both be ranked as two. But the index is not a rank function, so to get around this, we need to use the group by function. We're going to group by the percentage of total monthly sales, where we will tell Power Query to give us the minimum of each of those groupings. So for Ross and Jennifer, the end result will be 2 and 2, as that's the minimum for their grouping. 
So right click on percentage of total monthly sales, click on group by, click advanced. Let's call the new column grouped sales percentage. And we want our grouping to be for all rows. Then click add aggregation. Our next column can be ranking. And we want this to be min and select index and click on OK. And we have a new column showing our groupings in a list of separate tables. Let's click on our source. Remember, we initially had six records as there are six sales reps. If we go back to our grouped rows step, we now have five tables. Our first table has one record and the second table has two records, one for Ross and one for Jennifer and this table's ranking correctly shows us two. Now we want to expand this column, click on the expand button here in the grouped sales percentage column. Let's keep month and sales rep selected and uncheck percentage of total monthly sales as we already have that. And we don't need index, so uncheck that and uncheck use original column name as prefix and click on OK. And we now have our correct ranking of our sales reps based on the percentage of total sales for the month. Next, we're going to use a condition to determine if the rep is entitled to a bonus. You can find conditional column in the add column tab. Let's name the column bonus. And here is where we can define our conditions. So it's like our if statement in Excel. So if our ranking column is less than or equal to two, meaning if the rep is ranked number one or two, then our output needs to be yes. Let's click on add clause. Else if ranking is greater than two, then our output needs to be no. Then click on okay. And we have three people entitled to bonuses for the month of January. Let's drag percentage of total monthly sales to the third column. The reordered column step was applied. We can see that in our applied steps over here. And let's change our ranking column to a whole number. Now that we have our main query, the next step is to convert this query to a function. And we're going to use the advanced editor for this. Click on view, advanced editor, and here are all the steps that our query used to generate our final main query. And now let's turn this into a function. The advanced editor shows you all your steps in one view, instead of using the formula bar that shows each step separately. Here on let, press enter to add a space. This is where we will tell Power Query this is a function rather than a query. Insert and open parentheses or brackets, these brackets are used for functions, just like in Excel. The first part of the function relates to what our input needs to be. So this will be our source data. I'm going to name the source data sales data. And we need to also define what type this input is. And if you remember for this query, we converted our source data to a table before importing it into Power Query. So let's type as table. This type can be anything, like a number or date input, and so on. Next, let's add this arrow operator. It's an equal sign followed by a greater than sign. In the M language, this arrow operator is used to define functions. So everything before the arrow operator is our input, and everything after the arrow operator is what will be done to that input. After the let, we have our source step where Power Query brings in our source data. But we don't need this step here anymore, as our source data will now reside here as an input in sales data. So let's remove this step and move total up. Next, we need to replace wherever else source is referenced with sales data. So that's here in the change type step. The IntelliSense picks up the input we created. We don't have source referenced anywhere else. No syntax errors have been detected, so let's hit done. And we've now created our function from the query that we initially created. 
The fx on the left here shows this as a function rather than a table. The enter parameter is where we will enter our source data, which we named sales data. And this is where we invoke our function on that sales data. Our applied steps have now collapsed all those steps we performed into one. And if we look at our formula bar, it shows the entire function that we created. As we are creating our own function, we can name it whatever we like. Well, what makes sense to us? So I'm going to name this sales bonus, because that's what I want my function to tell me, whether or not the rep is entitled to a bonus. Let's send this function to Excel, click on File, Close and Load. Functions can be connections only. Let's go back to our source data and send this to Power Query. And here in our query pane on the left, we have our function that we created and our January sales data that we imported. Let's click on our sales bonus function and click on the drop down for sales data and select our January 22 table as the input to our function and click on invoke. And just like that, our query is generated. Let's rename this to sales bonus January if we look at our formula bar, there is only one step that's been applied, which is our invoked function. So, instead of repeating all those steps, using the function combined those steps into a single step that can all be called on in one go. This is a definite plus to improving your query's performance. Let's send this back to Excel, and our query is generated. Let's change this column to percentages. Before we look at the next way to invoke our function, 91% of my viewers are still not subscribed. If you're getting value from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could please hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications. This will really help me hit my 2022 goal of attaining 1000 subscribers. Now let's get back to our video. The other way in which you can invoke your function is by double clicking on the function on the right here in the Queries and Connections pane. I uploaded the February 22 sales data table into Power Query as a connection. Let's select it and click on OK. And this takes us to our Power Query editor and our function has already done all the calculations for us. Let's rename this to Sales Bonus February and send it back to Excel. And we have our February calculations, as we had for January. Now, let's say we wanted a consolidated view of this data, and we just want to hit refresh to invoke the function and update the calculations each month. Let's launch a blank query, go to Data, Get Data, From Other Sources, and click on Blank Query. In our formula bar, type equals Excel, and the IntelliSense brings up the Excel.current workbook function and insert open and close parentheses and hit enter. And all our tables in our workbook are brought into our query. We only want the tables ending with the underscore 22, so in the name column, click on this drop down and let's add a filter. Select ends with. We want rows where name ends with underscore 22 and click on OK. Here in the content column is where our sales data tables lie. So we have January and February with the month, sales rep and amount. So let's right click on content and click on remove other columns as we don't need the name column anymore. Now to invoke our function, in the add column tab, click on invoke custom function. And here in the invoke custom function dialog box, Let's leave the new column name as custom and let's select our function that we created, sales bonus. Here in sales data, we have the options to either select a table or a column name. If we use the table option, then we have our individual source tables that we can select, but this won't give us a consolidated view. Remember, we consolidated our tables when we use the excel.current workbook function and all our tables have been consolidated in Query 1, here in the Content column. So let's select Column Name, and select Content, and click on OK. We now have two columns, one showing our original source data in the Content column, and the other showing our output from invoking the Sales Bonus function here in the Sales Bonus column. 
we only require the sales bonus column, so right click and select remove other columns. Let's expand our table, ensure that use original column name as prefix is unchecked and click on OK. And we have our January and February data consolidated with our sales bonus function invoked in just a few steps. Let's rename this query to sales bonus consolidated and send this back to Excel. We can format these as percentages. This is also dynamic. Let's go back to our source data. I've added March sales data here in our current workbook and converted it to a table and named it March underscore 22. Let's go back to our sales bonus consolidated tab and hit refresh. And our query is updated. If we filter on the top two rankings, we can see who our star performers were that would receive bonuses. And if we filter on the bottom three rankings, we can determine which of our sales reps need a bit of added attention to up their sales game. You may be thinking, why use custom functions if you need to first create a main query, then convert that to a function? Well, a function is something that we can call on just like a normal query, but it combines a series of steps into a single step that can all be called on in one go. And that function can be used across multiple queries. If you want to change a part of the function, there's only one place to change that instead of multiple copies. And you are reducing redundant steps, which normally cause extra maintenance of the code. If you would like to learn more Power Query transformations, like the unpivot function, then please check out this video here, Power Query Age Analysis Report. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.